Welcome back everybody to the Chicago Academy of Sciences Natural History Storage Collection. Here we have approximately like a million or so natural history specimens from entomology to paleontology, but I wanna take you over here. My favorite part about traveling through these collections is when you open up these cabinets, you never know when you're gonna find something exceptionally rare or unusual. And I found a couple unusual things in this cabinet right here. Mammalogy, cabinet 13. This is a big one. So I think we're gonna open it up. We're gonna take these little switches, undo them, hop inside and see what we can find. Ready? Oh, here's the warning. Okay, we're back. Lift it up, bring it down. And here's what we have. Here's a wide of the cabinet right here. Ooh, I kinda have to go to the side so we can see it better. We have one, two, three, four, five shelves. On the bottom, we have a lot of porcupines. Moving up to some more porcupines. Here we have muskrats. On the top, I think we have a bunch of different types of rabbits, but this one way in the back, you see that little rump right here? That's the big boy. That's the unusual one that we're gonna check out. But first, I think I kinda wanna start at the bottom because these porcupines are also as interesting. Here we got a couple, let's see, a couple porcupines right here. We have one, two, three, some hides over here and some feet which are hooved, which are from, uh, these are pronghorns I think, which look like that, just like a weird North American antelope. I'm not really sure why we're preserving pronghorn feet, but I guess we are. The cool thing about porcupines, besides the fact that they're covered in all of these prickles, and they have a bunch of different types of hair, which if this gets in, come on man, focus. They have a couple different types of weird little hair besides those prickles, which I think is really interesting. But the coolest thing about porcupine, I realized when I looked at this skull earlier today, I'm gonna take out this skull and put it on the side so we can get a closer look at it. Real quick, think about a porcupine. Think about a porcupine, what do you think it is? You know, typically when you have a mammal like a coyote or a fox or something like that, usually very quickly we can set it into a group, you know? Like a koala is a marsupial, a coyote is a canine. Well, what is a porcupine? <clears throat> I didn't really know until I looked at this skull right here and saw some of the traits that uh, pop out. First off, if you look at it, it has these flat molars right here and no canines. So we know that it doesn't eat meat, it usually just grinds plant material. It also has this major gap in between the front incisors and the molars, and it has two incisors on the top jaw and the bottom jaw. Those are traits, surprisingly, of rodents, rodentia. A porcupine is a rodent, and I don't know why. It's just one of those cognitive dissonant things that you don't really think about. The most interesting thing about rodents is they have incisors that perpetually grow. These things never stop growing, unlike our teeth. And I'm gonna move this skull over here and bring this little one out and show you what I'm talking about. I found this tooth outside of this skull and I slipped it in. And right now I wanna pull it out just to show you how absolutely enormous it is. Here, ready? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yo, that's a porcupine incisor. Think about how big our teeth are. That's a porcupine tooth. Absolutely crazy. I'm gonna put that down and we're gonna move up to the next one. So here's our porcupine shelf, we got that. That pales in comparison to what we're gonna see next, which is on this second shelf from the top. Look over here, we got, come on, let's go, let's go. Odontra zebethicus, the common muskrat. These things I see, you see all the time in rivers. I see them all the time and I, I mistake them for otters, but most are beavers, pardon me, but usually it's a muskrat. So I'm gonna pull this out right here as far as I can. This is what a normal muskrat looks like. Kind of beaverish, kind of otterish. It just kind of looks like a regular old rodent. And then this is the unusual one right here. Notice the coloration is very different. Why is my phone not focusing today? What the heck is going on? Okay, I'm gonna reach back and try to grab it as carefully as I can. Okay, here we are right here. Here's our muskrat. Obviously, there's something very different between this muskrat and the other ones. This one is extremely white. Why? Well, my friends, it's exhibiting some sort of albinism. Albinism happens when you inherit mutated genes from both your parents, so you have an inability to produce some sort of pigmentation or color in every part of your body, from your fur to your tail to your feet. Look at this tail. The tail is relatively 
relatively pale compared to the tail of these other muskrats. This is what a normal one looks like. This is what our guy looks like. I was wondering how rare this one could possibly be. So I did a little research online and I found something. Um, I found an article from a 1935 journal of mammalogy that said this. It's over here. I got to read it off the computer. Okay, it said this. <clears throat> Joseph Buff of Syracuse had received only two albino specimens in over 600,000 muskrat skins purchased over a 53-year period. Okay, Joseph, why are you purchasing so many muskrat skins? That's what I want to know. But here's the thing. He found two out of 600,000 which puts the relative rarity of this, if everyone's selling them all of their muskrats, to one of 300,000. One in 300,000 muskrats, at least for Joseph, shows some sort of albinism gene. Also real quick, um, just kind of a nice side note, that article in the 1935 Journal of Homology was under a short excerpt about cannibalistic deer mice. You gotta love science journals, man. Anyway, we got a bunch of starfish in this one. We have the teaching collection, ornithology, entomologies over here. Let me know what you'd like to see. Thanks so much for subscribing and hanging out. I really appreciate it. Thanks for chilling. We'll see you next time.